Hi everyone and welcome to another video from PhotoSpeed. I'm Tim Jones and today what I'm going to be talking about is why I would pick the Pro 1000 over the Pro 300. Now before I start I just want to say that both of these printers are amazing. They both kind of are very similar in print quality and they both do an amazing job. With the release of the Pro 300 last year, what Canon did was they brought their kind of their A3 line and their smaller type of printers in line with their Pro series print, which is what the Pro 1000 used to start off, but now it's the Pro 300 starts that line of Pro printers all the way up to the 60 inch 6100 printer they do. So we're not really gonna look at the image quality because I think they're both comparable. But there are a few factors you need to consider when looking at both of these printers. And the first one of those is the cost. So the Pro 1000 is going to be a little bit more. It is going to be about £300 more than the Pro 300. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. However, what you need to factor in as with the Pro 300, you are getting a lot less ink out of the box. The Pro 1000 comes with 80 mil cartridges. So you're getting well over 500 pounds worth of ink out of the box. These ink cartridges will last you an awful lot longer as well. Now I've read a lot of things on the internet about how old the Pro 1000 is. It's about six years old now. Now it looks like comparing other printers in the Canon line, and their life cycle that Canon's life cycle is about eight years so we're not really expecting a new printer to replace the Pro 1000 unless there was a problem with it a little bit like the higher up the 24 inch and 44 and 60 inch machines where there was a slight little problem with the roll feeder and things so they did upgrade those um, to the 2100s and 4100 and 6100. However, it is still the same head in there. It's exactly the same head that's in the Pro 1000 in that line moving up right up to the 60 inch machine. So this is another advantage of the Pro 1000 is it is compatible with those larger machines as well because the same head technology in there just a smaller box effectively so we're not really expecting a new printer to come out within the next say 18 months to two years i did check with canon as well and that's kind of what they have said as well it could be that they're keeping this quite secret and it may be released however at the time of this video canon have no plans to replace the pro 1000 as yet so I suspect in a couple of years, they might just upgrade it and things. What the new release of the Pro 300 did, so it just brought it in line with this series of Pro printers. So we can now use the Pro 300 with the same ink as well and a slightly smaller ink set, but we can get the same quality of prints in there as well. So they're both fantastic and both amazing printers. So let's talk about why I would choose the Pro 1000 over the Pro 300. Now I've talked a little bit about cost here. Now, like I said, the Pro 1000 is around about 300 pounds more than the Pro 300. But you are getting a lot more ink with that as well. So it's a bigger investment up front, but I, I'd imagine if you do print a lot, you will be using that ink quite quickly in the Pro 300, so you will have to replace the cartridges a lot quicker. Now, when it comes to replacing the cartridges, I've worked out that the Pro 300 works out at £1.20 a mil in ink costs, whereas the Pro 1000 works at about 50p a mil. So it is more than half the price in ink as well, in ink costs. So that is a massive saving. Saying that, the Pro 1000 likes to be used. If you don't use it, it will do what's called the automatic cleaning cycles and things. You may read about these on the internet. Now, it's nothing to really worry about. It just will use about four, five mil of ink every time you switch it on and turn it off as well. 
So I do recommend leaving it on but saying that when you do leave it on every three days, like 72 hours, it will do an automatic cleaning cycle and use about four mil in to do this as well. So the more you use it, the more value you get out of it. Because the more you use it, as I understand it, the less frequency it does these cleaning cycles. So it is a printer that likes to be used. I give this one here, I would say I absolutely hammer. So I really do use it a lot and I don't really see any problems with inks and ink usage and wasting inks a lot. It very rarely does a clean and things for me, only if I switch it off and switch it on. So I'd always recommend going into those energy saving settings in the menu and turning off the auto switch off as well. So it will just stay on all the time. So there's a massive saving in ink basically with it. The obvious one, or the obvious point of why we would pick the Pro 1000 over the Pro 300 is also the size. But that can also be the negative as well, because like I said before, it is a large printer. And if obviously, if you haven't got the space, then, or a very strong desk to put it on because of the weight, then obviously that is gonna be something you need to consider as well. It's not much bigger than the Pro 300. I'd probably say about four inches, really. Um, in length and it's a little bit deeper as well probably another four four or five inches in depth as well but it's the weight of it as well you've got to consider but saying that that extra size does give you the ability to print 17 inches and that a2 size so you may not print a2 at the minute but it is i find it is a really nice feature to have and when you're printing you might think oh i just see what that looks like at a2 and things as well and it just gives you another toy to play with should i say another dimension to your photography and you can really start to push the size and things and things some things look great bigger as well so it's well worth it that extra bit as well Now, let's talk about a downside as well. I've already talked about the weight and size of it, if you could say that was a downside. It could also be a good plus side as well because you know it's sturdy and it's well built. We put these in the back of the vans for shows and things and they're absolutely fine. They hold up to the punishment we give them, shall we say. Now, another downside is the ability not to be able to use a roll on it. Now, this is something I don't really get in one way of why Canon didn't put the ability to use a roll on it. However, I kind of do get it at the same time because they probably want to push people to their larger printers like the Pro 2100, etc. That's a 24 inch roll machine. So they probably want to push people towards that a little bit more. Saying that, you can put cut sheet from a roll so you can get a 17 inch roll and you can cut a length off that roll and put it through up to, I think it's around about 50 inches through, well, 55 inches, I believe it is. So you can print panoramics as well. Now, this isn't ideal. However, you can do it if you need to do it. So if you do need to print panoramics and you would like that roll holder, the Pro 1000 probably isn't for you. You probably look at either going up to the 24 inch machine that Canon offer or the offerings from Epson as well that can take that roll with a uh, roll adapter in there like the P900 as well, which is their equivalent. Now, while I'm on that subject, if we look at the two printers, the Epson and the Canon side by side, I would say that the P900 and the Pro 1000 are very comparable. The only difference really is the head technology and there's a slightly larger gamut on the Epson, I would say. But in real world, if I was looking at it, I couldn't really see a lot of difference between the two, to be honest. OK, so there's a few points on why I would pick the Pro 1000 over the Pro 300. The main reasons for that would be ink costs. So it's over half the price in ink costs. So you're getting a lot more ink out of the box as well. 
The downside would be it's a little bit more money. It's another 300 pounds. But like I said, that is offset by the value of ink as well. So you are getting 300 pounds worth of more ink in the box effectively, or probably more, more like 400 pounds worth of ink out of the box as well. The other thing is obviously the size, so you can print bigger. Now it has the same functionality as the Pro 300, so you can still use the media configuration tool um, to set your own paper types in there. And it also has the same menu as well. So although the Pro 1000 is a bigger outlay to start with, it is well worth it down the line. But it also depends on how much you print as well. Like I said, the big downside with the Pro 1000 is it likes to be used, otherwise it does these automatic cleaning cycles, etc. as well. So we do need to consider that as well. But if you are looking for a printer that you can just throw a lot of prints at every week, then I would definitely go for the Pro 1000 over the Pro 300. But saying that the Pro 300 is a fantastic printer, I've been really impressed with it. I've been really impressed by the way they brought that an A3 printer into the Pro line as well. So the controls are the same. The, the interface is the same as well. You can use the same softwares with it as well. You can create your own media types and stuff through the media configuration tool. And I've been quite impressed with what they've done with it. It's a big step up from the Pro 10s that was before it. But saying that, the one big problem I do have with it is those little cartridges in it. I really wished they'd put perhaps even bigger cartridges, 25 mil, just go in between say, or 40 mil cartridges instead of the 80 mil that's in the Pro 1000. Take them off the top of the head and put them underneath like they did in the Pro 1000. And I think then it would be that perfect A3 printer to be honest. And perhaps in this video, I'd be saying different things. However, if it was me, if I had the choice, and also if I had the money as well, because that's a big factor as well, then your budget as well, because it is a lot of money. It's nearly over a thousand pounds, the Pro 1000, where you're looking around the 600, 700 mark for the Pro 300. But at the current time I'm making this video, that may change. So you've got to consider that as well, obviously your budget. So if you do have the money though, and you could stretch that little bit more, the Pro 1000 is well worth it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the, our YouTube channel below. And also, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments or drop me an email just at tim at photospeed.com. And I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.